So one of the things I've been working hard on over the last few months is an interactive sound system for a spaceship. (laughs) So the spaceship is being built by a team of people. Um, They've taken half of a commercial airplane and cut it in half and, and put a back on it with boosters and and filled the interior with cool lights and panels and all kinds of stuff it's a real big deal and it's really really awesome Uh, it's not tacky it's not kind of a a half-assed job they're really making this uh the experience of being inside this like you're in a spaceship it's even got a big mechanical gun on the top of it that you can control with the uh, joystick in the cockpit and you can shoot stuff and it's yeah it's really 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 cool um, it's going to be debuted in Auckland at Armageddon this weekend. So if you're in Auckland, New Zealand, um, and you're thinking about going to Armageddon or you're going to Armageddon, which is kind of a, um, it's a, it's a fest for nerds and it's worth going to, I reckon. Um, it will be there and you'll be able to see this in action. So my job is to create the sound. So there's speakers inside the spaceship and, Uh, It does things depending on different modes and what people do. Um, At its current stage, there's uh, a few works in progress. So things like there's going to be sensors that trigger sounds and stuff like that. They're still being worked on. um, But for now, we've got this kind of immersion system. And I wanted to talk you through it and show you how it works. Because I think it's a very interesting thing. And um, over the following videos... What I want to be doing is there's going to be a sort of voice announcement system that says various things. And um, these can be controlled via OSC or UDP um, because there is a panel and system designed with touch designer. So that's going to be the the thing that the users who are using this um, spaceship interact with. And then touch designer sends various things over OSC to the sound system that does stuff. So if I open up my control panel here, here it is. And um, I'll just get, I'll get it playing. Hopefully you've got a sub or some good headphones or speakers. So as it currently stands, these are all the different layers that play the sounds depending on what's happening in the spaceship. So currently we're in idle mode and idle mode is sort of just an initialization mode. this is all that it does and it has these three levels here which is sub noise and grit Um, and these are kind of the three core atmospheric sounds of the spaceship so here's the sub Um, i'm using frequency modulation a bit just to get kind of a bit of a you can hear here it's got a bit of a bit of bit of phase cancelling going on then we've got just got some filtered noise and the filters can be changed a little bit and then we've got this one called grit, which is just kind of a more of a harmonically rich sound. But you can see this parameter here controls the cutoff filter. So when you have all three of them going, you can get a kind of a nice mix of the atmosphere of being inside an idle spaceship. So the next mode is deep space mode, and this is for when people are in the ship for an extended period of time. So ultimately, this ship is going to become a place that you can book, um, perhaps on Airbnb. I'm not too sure how they're going to do it, but it's got um, it's got a bed and a lounge and, and um, you know, kind of all, all the stuff that you need when you're staying in a space, except you're staying inside a spaceship. So deep space mode is sort of for when people are a chillin. So let's click on this and move into deep space mode. <clears throat> so what happens here is the sub noise and grit. These are all going to move around extremely slowly. I should just talk about the the bubbles over here for a sec. So uh, part of the ship has plants, and the plants are connected with tubes that kind of crystallize. It's this. Uh, it's a very very complicated process guys um it turns the organic matter i guess the carbon dioxide or is it carbon whatever from the plants into oxygen um so the what happens is when people approach this area 
um, they hear different sounds and kind of bubbling and crystals and stuff. Um, that just triggered because when you trigger a new mode, um, uh, at the moment it triggers this to just rise and fall. But there it is there. So this is deep space mode. And the sub noise and grit change slightly at very long periods. So maybe every 20 minutes or so. And they just change very slightly just so there's a, a little bit of movement happen happening. All of these machine style noises also change um, again very 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 slowly and these add a little bit more flavor to the atmosphere so this is machine 3 if I bring this down we can bring up more so this is me manually controlling them But yeah, as I said, in deep space mode, these are all really slow. So the idea is, you know, people can um, kind of just chill out and not really have anything really grab their attention. Um, there's no ships passing. There's no alarms. Uh, there are beeps. Um, so these beeps do come on quite quietly. So if I, if I bring one of these up, let's bring them all up. Well, this one's obviously triggering at the moment. I can trigger them manually. I'll bring them all up. And the beeps are all using prime numbers, or um, you know, very high prime numbers, prime numbers, just so that they have the least possible um, possibility of triggering at the same time. Yeah, so these beeps come in. So this is deep space mode. Not much, not much else happens. Um, it's just quite atmospheric. The levels also come down by themselves quite often. So you never kind of get everything all up at once in deep space mode. Because as you can hear, that's um, way too busy. You see this one's going down now to zero. So I'll bring these all down. Cool. Then we have commute mode. This is for when the spaceship is, well, the simulation is, the spaceship is moving. So it's flying through space. Um, now when I click this, it's going to trigger these flybys. Let's have a listen. So we have two ships here that fly past. One from right to left and one from left to right. These are all synthesized. We're kind of using the Doppler effect a lot with this, so I'm doing a lot of, uh, as I pan from left to right or right to left, I'm also panning the pitch. And we're using this curve here, so this center point is where, um, you know, the ship actually kind of crosses past or flies past, um, which I'm quite, quite happy with. I'll do, I'll do one manually just so you can hear it. We'll do this one, so as I move this across. That was a really fast one. And so what happens in commute mode, you'll see that the ship passes. This one ha triggers every 130 seconds. This one triggers every 190 seconds. Um, commute mode also has various other flyby sounds that happen um, occasionally. Um, you might have heard a few while I was playing around. Um, and they're just triggering samples of ships passing. And also these machines and beeps. Here's another ship. Yeah, so the machine and the beeps also um, bring up their volumes more frequently in commute mode. So it's a little bit busier. The modes kind of get more and more busier as we go. The next one is port mode. So this is for when the ship is docked and it's in a busy kind of spaceport. Um, and there's a, quite a lot going on here. So let's click on this one.
Now one thing that's activated in port mode is this motor parameter. And what, what this is doing is I'm just trying to simulate some kind of machine outside of the ship doing work. Maybe a, I don't know, some kind of crane or... You know, we're in a port so there's going to be sounds outside of movement and activity. So this motor parameter has... Um, well, this parameter here, you can see it's moving by itself. It kind of randomly moves around and kind of changes the motor sound to do various things. So I can't move this manually because it's being automated. Yeah, and all the beeps and stuff happen more quickly. There's quite a lot of uh, little interface sounds that you can hear. Um, yeah, there we go. Kind of all, all these cool little things going on. Which I think is pretty neat. And you'll see that the, sh the flybys of the ships pass more frequently. And by the way, I'm just completely pretending that you can hear stuff in space, but I'm I'm quite happy to be ignorant to that fact. Because, yeah, otherwise <laughs> this project would just be silence. Well, maybe the inside of the ship wouldn't, but anyway. And the final mode is battle mode. Let's click on that. Now with battle mode, things happen a lot. And we start getting these alarms coming in. I'll bring them up manually. So this is for when people are in the cockpit and they're shooting stuff. And there's screens, and there's a 3D environment, and there's planets and asteroids and stuff coming at you, and um, yeah, I'm, I've seen a bit of its development, and it's fairly cool. So with that, um, people need to control this particular ray gun and move it around, and that, that needs sounds as well. So when the person is moving the joystick, it sends OSC messages to this area here. So we have um, left right, up, down, and this is charging the ray gun, so they have to charge it, and they have to charge it to the right point, and then they can fire it. they don't do it at the right point um, it fails and it kind of dissipates all its energy and when it hits something we have an explosion so they can send a oh whoa, that's a loud one let's bring that down a little bit of fine tuning to, to go um, so when they hit something they can send a time in milliseconds for how long an explosion is Let's go back to idle mode. <laughs> so that's a, that's a run through of, of what we're doing here. Um, this, hopefully there's quite a lot more that we're going to be working on. We're obviously like really pushing to hit this deadline for Armageddon to have some sort of a interactivity, which um, yeah, the team over in um, Christchurch, I'm sure they're working extremely hard today and running around panicking, but that's all good. Uh, I'm just quite happy here on my, <laughs> on my computer working away. I just want to show you the guts really quickly because um, this will lead into kind of the next thing that I want to do. It's a bit of a mess, by the way, so I haven't cleaned up the patch. By the, so it's a bit uh, all over the place. It's pretty, um, I'm pretty happy with it, though. So this is what it looks like on the inside and you'll see the, the OSC messages, OSC messages, OSC come in and do things and yeah the the way that we have the randomization again could be optimized and I could do a lot of sub patching and stuff to get rid of all the cables but it is what it is and it works for now. So in the next videos what we want to have is sort of a text to speech based system. So I've currently got someone doing vocals. They're reading a, a big list of various words. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to chop them up and we're going to make, I'm going to make a system in Max that allows uh, 
an OSC message to come in that, uh, hold on a minute, this one here, let's unfreeze it for a sec. So an OSC message comes in and let's say it's just a uh, voice and then it's like, you know, deep space mode acti activa activated, you know, and they'll send that OSC message and we'll say it. it's going to be sample based. Um, you know, uh, maybe I'll look into like you know, phonem synthesis. You know, that could be a cool topic to explore and it's something I've always wanted to look at. But for now, we're just going to cut up heaps of samples of words and also lots of words like and, that, before, after, things like that. Um, so there's quite a good library of things that people can send. So that's what I'm going to be covering in the next videos is my journey into doing that. Just as an example, these are just samples I got of splice sounds that are quite, that I just kind of typed in spaceship or robot voice or something. So these are the kind of sounds we're going for, the kind of phrases. Escape pod malfunction. Good evening, user. Alternate universe located. Maximize. Deactivate. Stand by for download. Suit malfunction. Would you like assistance? <laughs> so there you go. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get this system done before Armageddon, this voice system, because I believe they have to start moving tomorrow because it's a big thing and it's being built in Christchurch, which is in the South Island, and they've got to transport it to Auckland and obviously they'll need to do that via road. So they need to actually get moving tomorrow to get it all set up there. Um, but we'll see how we go. I'm going to spend a bit of time on it today. So tune into the next video where Tom explores some form of text-to-speech. <laughs>